Hi, my name is John Humanic. Welcome to my channel. I'm so excited you're here. Today, we're gonna talk about how to spot a false prophet. Now, in the kingdom of God, there are going to be a lot of prophets that prophesy, and there are gonna be people that prophesy that aren't prophets. But there's a difference between a prophet who speaks and then actually a false prophet, because just because a prophet says something and it may not come to pass, you have to understand that prophecy is timeless. And a lot of the words that a prophet that is he or she will speak may not necessarily be in this lifetime. We see this in scripture when you see the great prophets, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, so many of their utterances, words, the things that they spoke didn't happen in their lifetime. So when you have to understand the difference between a prophet and a false prophet is that it's not necessarily the words, but what it is the intent and what's behind the intent and the actual aspects of whether it is a form of deception? Is it a form of manipulation? Is it even a form of witchcraft or even worse where they go all in and they actually lie about the things that they're doing because what they're trying to do is steer you into a pit or actually darkness. And that's going to be the key area that we're gonna to cover today between a prophet and a prophetess of the Lord or someone who is a false prophet, who ultimately really is a form of the Antichrist, which is someone that's actually opposed to Christianity. So let's hop right into it. Now, if you're new to prophecy, I want you to understand that the words that are spoken in prophecy are timeless, which means they may be for you in this current time or in the future. But what you have to understand is, do not judge people for their actions. Allow God to judge them you receive the words that you need to receive from this video so you can apply. So if you have anyone that you know that is interested in prophecy and would like to learn more, please share this video with them and have them subscribe to this channel because we are doing a mighty work in the kingdom of God, deciphering the truth so that people who want to walk with Christ understand the difference between those who don't. Because the reality is, is if you don't know the word of God, it's going to be very, very difficult to discern a false prophet from someone who just sounds really good. That's going to be key. Now, what you have to understand is, is that when you walk into a situation where there's false prophecy, that what they're doing is they're ultimately prophesying from two realms. There's the realm of the flesh or the second heaven. Now, in order for a prophet to truly prophesy, what you have to understand is, is they're not their words. They actually are in the third heaven, which is where the God sits. And if you're not familiar with all three tiers, basically the realm is, is that you can look at them as, as the first realm is earth. The second realm is where Satan rules. And the third realm is actually heaven itself. You'll hear people say first, second, and third heavens. But the reality is, is that it's just the flesh, it's the soul, and it's the spirit. Now, when you see the difference between a prophet of the Lord, the prophet of the Lord is going to speak from the heavenlies. He or she's words are not theirs. In fact, what they're doing is, is they're speaking the things that don't exist so that they come into being. They're kaleoing those aspects in. Now, Revelation is a bigger umbrella of prophecy. And what it could include is words of wisdom, words of knowledge, words of discernment. And the reality is that those aren't prophecy. Those are words of wisdom, this knowledge and discernment. They're under this umbrella of revelation. And a lot of people get those confused because prophecy is literally seeing into the future and pulling it forward. Now there's different aspects of that and there's areas that it does cover that it's just not a blanket statement, but that's the essence. When you hear someone start speaking words that don't align with the Bible, you can start to be concerned with is, do they know the Bible correctly? Because they may be speaking with the right heart, but maybe they just don't know their word. Or are they actually trying to deceive, manipulate, or try to pull you away from God altogether? Which is really, again, very sinful and not the space where you want to be. How do you then discern that? How do you then know that this person that you're listening to, how do you even know myself? How do you know that these things are true? Well, the reality is it's very simple. You can fact check every single thing that they say because a prophet cannot prophesy these things unless it aligns with the word of God. In fact, the Bible is so vast and so complicated that the Bible itself confirms the word of God because it's complete. God didn't need to put a book after Revelation. 
I asked God the other day, I said, why didn't you just add another book? Why did you stop in the first century? Why didn't you just include the, the second century and the third century, those founding fathers that were a part of the, that church and knew the original apostles? He said, my word's complete. I didn't need to add anything because it completed everything that I needed to tell my people through the written word. But prophecy goes beyond that because prophecy aligns people's futures with their present. It allows them to break free from strongholds that they're currently caught in. Situations where they may be saying, God's like, hey, I need you to move to a new city. Or, you know, that person you're seeing isn't going to be your future spouse or the job you have is temporary. I need you there for the another three months, but I want you to move on. The difference is, is that prophecy talks about, eludes and pulls the future. It takes the present and moves you forward. That's the essence of prophecy. Words of wisdom are designed specifically to allow a person to understand the how. Knowledge is the what. Discernment is an aspect of understanding the difference between right and wrong or actually good and bad. Now, discernment of spirits is different than discernment. And I know there's a lot of religious folks out there that talk about that discernment doesn't exist in the Bible, but it does because it's knowing right from wrong. You see that all the time. Jesus discerned the situation over and over again. The woman at the well, that was discernment. Those things he understood, he discerned her situation, spoke life into it, and then gave her a prophecy about the future because he says, I am the Christ and I'm here to fulfill the law. I'm here, here as the Messiah. And so then she took it and ran with it and her future changed. That's the essence of prophecy. Prophecy is specifically designed to realign you with the perfect will of God on your life. That's the power of prophecy. The power of the false prophet is to take you off the path of God and move you off that line, even if it is just 1%. That's how the difference works. The, the false prophets will speak out of the 99% true process, I mean, some of the situations, and then that 0.1%, that 1%, maybe even 5% will just veer you off the course. And you have to think about it. If you create a road that's perfectly straight, and then all of a sudden you said, hey, let me move the road 1% over and then 1% over. Over time, you've completely gone off course. You will actually create a curve that you can't even see because it's so subtle. That's what false prophecy does. False prophecy comes from the realm of the soul or functionally the second heaven where the battle between the flesh and the spirit occur. It definitely can come from the realm of the flesh for sure, but a lot of times false prophecy is disguised as prophecy to allow people to accept it because if it's so blatantly obvious, many people won't accept it. So you have to understand that the power of prophecy reveals false prophecy. False prophecy is an aspect where it'll make your spirit uncomfortable, it will feel right, but what happens is it almost always, at least initially, definitely over time, costs you something. Here's how you understand some things, and this let's take a step back before we take a step forward for you to truly understand the nuance and the difference between prophecy and false prophecy, because understanding this is going to be critical. When God created Satan, he created Satan to be a servant of the Most High God. In scripture, it alludes to, which is probably accurate, that he was the leader of the chorus in heaven, which is why we probably see music, the industry being the way it is, being able to manipulate and cause so many problems. Problems. It opens people's up to being actually possessed and all kinds of other things. That's why you really have to be careful what you watch and what you see, what you read, because when you hear these different things and you experience them, you bring that into your being and you literally take on the spirit that 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 aspect becomes. Even if you have the Holy Spirit, what it'll do is it will try to push the Holy Spirit back. Again, you can't kick the Holy Spirit out, but what it does is it tries to put that new spirit in the forefront and allow that spirit to take over, hence the Antichrist. That's the essence of what we're talking about. It's all the same thing. So when you see this and how it works is, is that Satan himself, himself was designed to serve God. He was an anointed cherubim. He was on the mountain of God, which meant he was very, very close to God in the, in the sphere of power, probably one of the most powerful angels in all of heaven, because you're not going to be on the mountain of God unless you have some special position in the kingdom. And he was so persuasive that a third of heaven followed him, even though they had seen and experienced the goodness 
of the God, the Father, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. It's incredible that his deception was that great. But imagine this. The thing about it is, is that Satan was created of a kind. He's an angel, fallen angel now, but he did not have any form of creative power. When you understand the kind, you understand that animals came through the ground. The sea, the animals, the air all came from the ground. So God spoke creation into existence and then spoke another creation through creation. But mankind was very different. In the Garden of Eden, God himself said, let us make man in our image. So what he do is he took his hands and formed man out of the ground, then breathed his life into us. And so this is the essence of what you see is, is that mankind takes on the image of the Almighty. Mankind can do the things God can do because the Holy Spirit's inside you. Now, what you have to understand is, is that you have creative power. Man can progressively improve. Man can think. Man can do things. And when you do something, there's no exchange. That's the power of the Almighty. But this is the essence of witchcraft. This is the essence of the demonic. This is the essence of how Satan operates. And this is, again, the aspects behind the false prophet. When you hear a false prophecy, it always cost you something because there is no creative power. There isn't anything that Satan can give you unless he takes something away. That's the essence of the de deception and all the things that happen. So now when you understand that how false prophecy works is it comes to take, it comes to replace, it comes to be able to turn you off the course of God's vision on your life and put you in a position where you're now struggling. So now we talked about the top level principles. Let's talk about practical aspects and how this you can walk this out. Now, it's important to understand that the Bible is the standard in which you have to measure what people say. Anytime that something comes and says Jesus is not Lord, we know that's the spirit of the Antichrist. That comes from Scripture. But you have to know is that there are elements like the Catholic Church. There are elements like Mormonism. You know, you have all these other religions. And you're like, well, what about the Presbyterians? What about the Methodists? What about the global Methodists? What about all these different branches? Presbyterian USA. Are they biblical? Are the Baptists biblical? Are the Muslims biblical? Where do we fall short? Where does God start and stop? And where does humanity begin? So how do I know what's truth? And then how do I know that Christianity in the Bible sets itself apart as the truth in amongst a sea of other things claiming to be truth? So we're gonna dive into that because that's how you understand how prophecy works and how false prophecy works. Now, the key part to understand is, is that what you'll see is a very common theme throughout all the forms of religions is that more times or not, a religion is built specifically to explain a set of doctrines and base their ideas around a principle. The Methodists are very, very big around grace. That's one of the core aspects that the Methodists have. Baptists, obviously, by name, generally talks about the baptism and the renewal of the spirit. But what you see is, is in a lot of religious institutions, what's missing is the Holy Spirit. Now, that doesn't necessarily make them unchristian or unbiblical, but what it does is it, what it means is it depowers the Christian, which in and of itself is the essence of what false prophecy does. False prophecy comes to strip away the truth. If you're not saved in Jesus Christ, you can be dramatically influenced by false prophecy because you don't have the Holy Spirit inside you. And we have a, a beautiful salvation video called Time to Choose that you can watch that will really set you on the right path. And if you know someone who isn't saved, that's the video to share with them because the time is now to choose because tomorrow is not promised for everyone. When you understand how false prophecy works is that what it does is it's designed to shift you away. It's designed to speak something that's not aligned with the word of God. When you start to understand how the religions work, a lot of the religions were created for a good purpose because they were either opposing another religion that had veered itself off the path so greatly that they didn't even realize that they were actually deceived by false prophets, that now they were trying to realign themselves with God's word. And in fact, what has happened is with all the religions, in fact, all the religions have veered themselves off the path of God in some way, but that doesn't necessarily make them 
non-Christian religions. I want to make myself super clear. But what it does do is it is, what it does is it strips away the power that the Holy Spirit can operate through you, which is why you see a lot of non-denominational churches totally on fire for God and just dominating the landscape because they're not compromising their beliefs to a structure that's been applied, whether that's a religion was formed 50 years ago or 200 years ago. When you get into a situation like the Catholic religion, which has been around for so long, there are elements of the Catholic religion that are so unbiblical that, in fact, you can consider them heresy. You can even go further and consider them actually demonic because they produce and create an essence of guilt and structure that take Jesus off the throne and put Mary, Joseph, and others on that throne. Nowhere in Scripture does it say that. When you actually understand the biblical doctrines that the Catholic Church believes, you will see that there is a ton of false prophecy in there. Although, admittedly, the reality is, is I grew up a Catholic, and I was saved as a Catholic. So again, you want to make sure you understand a couple of things. Don't hear what I'm not saying. You can still be a Christian and operate in these religions, but the reality is, is you will be depowered. You will be exposed to the tactics of the enemy, and you can be deceived. And there's nothing the devil would want more than anything is to put a false prophet in your life and take a Christian and make them functionally neutered for the rest of their life. And that's what I'm here to do. I'm here to unlock the truth so that you can look past these religions and say, okay, well, how do I understand the truth? How do I find a church that's on fire? How do I see a man of God, like maybe a, t a pastor Tim Timberlake or a pastor Stan Pody, someone or like a pastor Jonathan Shuttlesworth so, or a pastor Rodney Howard Bond, these great men of God who speak truth into the world and just clear out the demonic atmosphere. You have to understand is, is the Word of God is critical in your life. You have to study the Word of God. And if you don't know the Word of God, it will give you the opportunity to be deceived. In fact, as much as I've studied the Word of God, God continues to open my eyes to Scripture over and over again. He unlocked three ridiculously amazing truths. They blew me away. They were just legendary truths from just Revelation 1 and 2, stuff that I had never seen before. The very chapters that I probably read dozens, maybe hundreds of times, and yet here it is, he's showing me new truths. So what it does is, is the truth of God goes inside you. What it does is it puts a wedge that the enemy in the world cannot budge you from. So you start to understand, well, how do you know that the word of God is true compared to all these other teachings? Well, the reality is very simple. The demons only flee from the name of Jesus. That's it. If you ever actually encounter a demonic possession, then you know it is only by the power of Jesus Christ that they are pushed out. If you need healing and you call upon the name of Jesus and you are healed, healing only comes from the power of God. You might say, well, what about Reiki healing? What about all these other crystals? No, no, you have to understand. They give you something and then they still take. Jesus is the only one that will give you a miracle and that's it. There is no exchange. There is no things that he's taking away from you. In fact, it's always a give. It's a one-way road. You can give to God, but God will, can give to you for your entire life without ever having him take something from you. And so you have to understand that's the essence of the truth, is that no religion, no structure, no anything, any type of Bible, any type, regardless if it's the Christian Bible or the Jewish Bible or the Tanakh or anything else. And again, the Jewish Tanakh, which is the Old Testament, is in the Bible. But all of these other apocryphal books, like say, for example, the Gospel of Thomas, uh, even the Gospel of Judas, the Book of Moses, there's so many out there, Jubilees, Enoch, they're all separate. In fact, they would be considered basically fiction today. Would no be no different than Harry Potter or the Avengers or anything else that people read today that are super popular. Even the Lord of the Rings, again, would it does look like when you understand the nuances of how C.S. Lewis and all those great authors wrote, there's biblical aspects behind Lord of the Rings and um, you know Chronicles of Narnia and all these other things. But at the end of the day, it's all fiction. And that's what you see with Enoch, and you see that with Jubilees. You see that there. They may be based on fact, and the Bible does quote Enoch, but that doesn't mean it's true, at least in the context of the entire book. So when you start to understand the difference between prophecy and false prophecy, there's nothing in prophecy that falls apart 
under the weight or testing of God. False prophecy eventually will crumble even over time, and even if you don't see it, that's the essence of it is. So how do you start to discern the difference between false prophecy and prophecy? Well, part of it comes with peace. God's prophecy, even if you feel uncomfortable as you've received it, you will receive peace. You may have discomfort in the flesh, and I've talked to people over and over again about prophecy. I've prophesied over them. This is what your future calls for. This is your calling. This is the graces that you operate in. And I've had people just flat out reject me. They're like, no, I can't come into agreement with it. I want to do this instead. And you'll notice the answer, I want to do this instead. So what is that? That's a sign of pride. That's how you start to see, you can start to ask yourself, is the decision to not accept the word that's being spoken to me, one, because I don't want to hear it, or I'm uncomfortable, or it is something that I, I don't really see myself doing. Those are all aspects that shows you that you're in the flesh and that the word probably is not. And so that's the aspect that you have to talk about. When you start walking in prophecy and you hear people talking of prophecy, it's very important to note that prophecy is timeless, meaning you may receive a prophetic word from someone that may not apply for 80 years. It may apply in five minutes. It may apply in five minutes and 80 years. That's the power of prophecy because God is timeless. He exists outside of time. Where a false prophet, when they speak, it'll be time bound, it'll be structured, and it'll be a place where you're like, huh, this is something that may come to pass, but it may not have come to pass fully, or maybe something that they, they understood, but they didn't understand it completely, and it sounds off. It'll feel off. It'll feel deceptive. It'll feel manipulative. It'll feel like it's doing something that's just not biblical. And the end of the day, the, the best way to describe prophecy is, does prophecy push you closer to the seat of Jesus? Does prophecy push you to repent of your sins? Does prophecy put you in a place where you're going to get to the feet of Jesus, where you can be refreshed, where you can feel loved and joy, the peace, the hope. You can feel the humility. You can feel the surrender. You can feel the obedience so you can follow in the footsteps of Jesus Christ. That's the essence of what prophecy is. Prophecy's fruit is always good. It is always going to be positive is always going to be incredible. Even if you can't see it today as it manifests in your life, ultimately over time, when you trust God and you have your faith in him, he will guide you in the path. That's the power of prophecy. Prophecy puts you on the path of God and you may not see the whole path. You may not understand all the steps that you're going through. In fact, those steps may feel more uncomfortable than staying where you were, but comfort's not promised in the Bible. What's promised is salvation. What's promised is going from glory to glory and faith to faith. And you can see the more times you're in caught in spiritual warfare, there's a pretty good chance that you're doing the things God wants you to do. And in fact, your breakthrough is on the way. False prophecy drives you towards comfort, drives you towards complacency, drives you towards looking away from God, looking away from Jesus. That's the essence of false prophecy. It's designed to pull you away from God in all these different ways, whether it's manipulation, distraction, it maybe it's a time blessing on your life. Maybe it's something that you were supposed to do and you decided not to do it on time. Well, the reality is, is you can miss out on blessings. You may want to do it, but if you don't do it in that window, it'll pass. And so that doesn't mean it's not lost. God can bring it back to you, but it'll probably be in a different form. And that could apply for many things. Think about people applying for school or wanting to buy a house or trying to get a job. If you're late in any of those things, but you still want to do it and someone else takes those spots and there's nothing left, especially when it comes to a house, guess what? The blessing has moved on. That doesn't mean you can't get a new house, but you can't get the one you just saw. You may get it later if they decide to leave, but again, those chances are small, but they are still there. That's the essence of prophecy. That's the essence of false prophecy. False prophecy designs to, to continue to push you away from Jesus Christ. Prophecy brings you closer to Jesus Christ. False prophecy adds chains to your wrist. Prophecy removes the chains. False prophecy comes to bind you, to su suffocate you, to slowly prevent you from coming into your calling. Prophecy sets you free, lifts you up, moves you forward, and moves you in the power of God, so allows you to fulfill the divine destiny on your life. That's the difference. False prophecy comes from prophets who truly do not care about the sheep. They are functionally wolves in sheep clothing, even if they don't recognize it, which is even the worst of the worst. As much as I would really try to understand the fact of a person 
purposely manipulating people, purposely driving them away from Jesus Christ. That's absolutely horrible. The Bible talks about it. It's not a good place to be. But when you're in that spot and you don't even realize you're doing it, you actually have a higher standard that you think you're operating at and you dare not. And I even remember a testimony of a gentleman who asked God to show him a vision of what it was like and he was in line and he actually said he got at the he was at the great white throne judgment and everyone he saw in front of them was condemned to hell for all of eternity because this is the great white throne judgment at the end of revelation so this is when the new heaven and new earth come and everything's reset and he was in line and he got to see jesus and he was terrified beyond belief he was terrified beyond belief because he didn't have a relationship. He didn't know who Jesus was. And Jesus said that the one post you posted on Facebook misled, I think, 300,000 people away from Jesus Christ. That's false prophecy. He didn't do it on purpose. In fact, he was a saved Christian. He actually didn't get condemned by Jesus Christ, but he said, Jesus said that you get to come into my kingdom, but there's zero reward for you. You have to start at the very bottom. And so he comes into the kingdom understanding that, wow, it was 300,000 lives that he had cost. And again, this was a vision. This didn't actually happen, but I'm sure it was very purposeful for the state of his heart at that current time. That's the power of false prophecy because it's deceptive. You can't, it manipulates you into being a person that you're not supposed to be. And that's the key is it does the things that you do bring Jesus closer to the people that you're talking to, or does it pull it away? And it is, as a perfect example, that Facebook post that deceived so many people pulled them away from Jesus. You have to understand is, is that studying your Bible is so critical to understanding these things. Because again, the more you know about the Bible, the less likelihood that you could be deceived. And you have to know this very clearly. The devil has been around longer than all of us and knows the Bible inside and out. And that's what he tries to do is the first thing he tries to do is steal the word. That's why when he tempted Jesus, he tempted Jesus with his identity and then used the word of God against the word of God. But Jesus, being the word of God, saw through the false prophet, the, the lies that Satan was speaking, and he spoke truth into that because he used the correct Bible verse in the correct context to move people forward. And that's the essence of what a true prophet does versus a false prophet. I pray this video highly edified you. And if you have someone again who is struggling to understand the difference between prophecy and false prophecy, again, it all boils down to, are they going to Jesus? Are they not? Share this video with them. It's gonna be awesome. It'll help edify someone in a big way and set them free. And if I would prayerfully ask you to partner with this ministry, we opened up new partner channels on Patreon. There you can go and search my name, John Humanic, partner with us and push the gospel out in force and in power to save the people who are deceived, to bring them back into the kingdom of God so they can operate in their God-given graces. God bless.